G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip I'll be running through the daily and weekly maintenance that I carry out on our aquaponics system to keep it running smoothly. So to begin with, we'll just run through the different components in the system and the maintenance that I need to carry out. Now first off we have the fish and the fish tank. Now the fish tank is pretty much all self-cleaning. Um, it has a water coming in there creating a bit of a swirl and all the solids hopefully gather in the centre and then are taking up and out into a solid settler which is a part of my weekly maintenance. Now as for the fish themselves, well daily they require some feed. At the moment they're getting roughly around about 50 grams uh, either once or twice a day depending on the water temperature uh, which is a whole different clip, feeding rates and that sort of thing. And the only other thing I really do with these guys is pop a camera in once every three or four weeks just to make sure there's no blemishes on the fish themselves and they're all looking healthy. Um, I could net them out, but I just figure, you know, it's a lot less stressful with today's technology to pop a camera down there, just observe them for about half an hour and just see what they're all looking like. As for time-wise on a daily basis, I mean, it's nothing just to um, throw the feed in, um, observe the fish, make sure they've eaten all the food, uh, and that probably takes, you know, probably three to four minutes on a daily basis. And it's something I do while I'm um, maintaining other parts of the system, which we'll look at in a minute. Now the filter, which is the next component in line, uh, the maintenance required here is pretty much all weekly at the moment because I'm not um, putting a lot of feed in the system, which means there's not a lot of solids um, gathering down the bottom. All that'll change once the fish put on a little bit more size and their feed rate goes up, obviously they'll be creating more solids and this may need to be cleaned out every, I don't know, four to five days. I'm actually going to run through the cleaning of this in a tick uh, just to show you my weekly maintenance. Now after the solid settler, I have um, just something I'm experimenting with here at the moment. It's a uh, bio slash trickle filter. So it's basically an added um, component of biological filtration in here. We have the water going down through this sponge, which does get rather um, messy and needs to be cleaned out at the moment every three to four days. So I'm actually looking at buying a different sort of filter material. Um, that will be easier to clean so that's something that will be coming down the line and maybe I'm thinking probably every couple of months three or four months I might need to move the solids or remove some solids that is that make it through into that biomedia underneath it um, there is a pump down in there and it does require some maintenance but it's only probably once a month I'll just pull it out to make sure it's not clogged up in any way now as far as the grow beds are concerned what I do is I generally toss in some feed for the fish in the morning and then come around and check for pests and I worry about harvesting later on in the night. Now at the moment we don't really have a lot of issues with pests. To begin with we had a load of Heliophis caterpillar in here but I think we've pretty much well knocked them on the head now. Um, one issue we are having is the white cabbage butterfly. As you can see Telltale holes and they may be hard to find on first glance. There's none around the holes. So now I've got the phone in focus. You can probably make him out down there next to the spine in the leaf. Uh, just hiding so what I generally do is just squish them and as a preventative I spray them with a BT spray which is a naturally occurring bacteria gets in the gut of the caterpillar and pretty much all knocks them on the head um, I'm actually working on a uh, pest control clip for aquaponics so hit that subscribe button down there and pound on the bell if you want notification when that's posted but um, yeah they're, they're very easy to look after if you're out here daily you can pretty much will spot them and give them a bit of a squish uh, but the preventative is also a good treatment I think um, but yeah just to cast a quick eye over looking for any pests uh, the other thing I do is like to come around and knock off any of these leaves that are um, looking like they're getting a bit manky and dying on the surface mainly because um, it's a bit moist down there and it can encourage uh, things like mildew and mold and if you've got slugs in the system it's a perfect place for them to hide so I like to um, pick off any of those leaves there's another one over here that one there will be um, coming off as well. These kohlrabi are actually looking uh, pretty good. So they'll be coming out of the system in a couple of weeks time. So just down here in the bell siphon is another little bit of maintenance that I like to carry out from time to time. It's not so much an issue in this bed at the moment because it's fairly new, but you might be able to make out some roots down there in the standpipe shroud. Now what they can do is they can actually grow up and down into that standpipe and clog it from draining and you can end up with your bed overflowing which can cause all sorts of issues. So every now and then I like to come down here, just have a bit of a gander down in there and break off any roots that I see. And yeah, um, pretty much all something that I do every couple of weeks. So roots blocking drain pipes isn't really something that you're going to have to be concerned about um, 
on a frequent basis. I mean, I've got this tatsoi here, it's gonna be there for probably another month or two. So I will have issues with roots growing in there. But if you've got fast turnaround crops, you know, you're picking them fairly quickly. Uh, it's generally not an issue you have, but it does pay for you to, you know, just suss it out and see what it looks like from time to time. So that's pretty much all it for grow bed maintenance. We'll nip around the other side and talk testing. So there is some testing I like to carry out on a daily basis, and that is namely pH, just to see how the pH is traveling in the system. And also because we're in winter, temperature as well, because with the fish that we've got, uh, they're a tropical fish or they like the warmer waters. Um, so they will stop feeding at certain um, temperatures. So I just like to check that before I toss the feed in at the moment. Now, you can get uh, the little chemical based um, pH test. I just have issues with um, trying to get them read accurately. So I've got one of these little awesome blue lab um, combo meters that does both the pH and the temperature. And if you're into um, hydroponics as well, it also does your nutrient units as well. Um, so this here, it's just a matter of every day coming out, taking off the little cap, putting it to one side, make sure it doesn't get knocked over. So now I've got the leads untangled. We'll pop them down into the sump tank and we'll make sure they're underwater and switch this on. We'll start off with temperature first, uh, 18 degrees, 17 degrees. I'll just leave it in a little while. It takes a while for that one to um, settle down. Go over to pH, 6.9. I like my pH to be between 6.5 and 6.8. Um, if it's a little bit higher, up to seven, I don't really worry. But um, yeah, 6.5 is my bottom and um, 6.8 I stop adding any calcium hydroxide or potassium bicarbonate. So we're sitting, yeah, it looks like we're sitting around about 6.8 at the moment. Uh, generally, if it was down, what I would do is put in around about a heaped teaspoon of calcium hydroxide, not too scientific, I know. Uh, mix that in with some system water and then pop it under the inlet to one of the grow beds and then come back and test a bit later and see um, how high the pH has risen after that. Needs a couple of cycles of water through the bed before you can get an accurate reading. Now back onto water temperature. We're sitting around about 18 degrees Celsius, which is the bottom level of the jade perch uh, being able to metabolize their, um, their feed. So it would be okay to add some feed in today for them. Now I really do think these meters are worth it, especially the, the better brands. Uh, there are a few out there. I've only used the Blue Lab and the Hanna, and I found them both to be good. I've been using this one for a couple of years now. I used the Hannas for a couple of years. As long as you've got pH and temperature, you're all good. You don't really need to know the EC or the nutrient level, mainly because in aquaponics, um, you don't have all the available nutrients, the salts, and that's what the, um, the little EC and TDS meters are reading, the salt level. So yeah, because some of the nutrients are available in other forms, you won't get an accurate uh, reading. So just look for something that has pH and temperature and you'll be on the right track. Uh, just uh, a little bit of a heads up for you folks in the States. I do have an Am Amazon influencer page, so I will get a bit of a commission, but I have got some of these listed over there. So check that out. There'll be a link down in the description. Now, the only other test I really do is a weekly one, and that is for ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. And I do that when I'm just before I clean out the filter, which I'm about to do. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a gander at that. Uh, it's basically, I'm, I'm using the API freshwater test kit. Uh, it comes with your pH, which I don't use because I got the meter, an ammonia test, a nitrite test, and a nitrate test. Now, I like to take the water that is coming back into the fish tank, mainly because I just want to make sure that my little biological filter down in there is uh, converting the ammonia all the way through to nitrate after it's passed through the settler and before it gets pumped back into their fish tank. I just like the fish to have nice clean water. I'm funny like that. So it's a pretty easy process. I just collect some water from the inflow there and then just flick it out until it gets down to that little five mil line there. So, um, you know, you try and get as accurate as possible, but if you're a smidge under or a smidge over, um, and I've done a few tests on this, um, you're pretty much all going to get an accurate reading. Then from there, I'm just popping down here in this groovy little holder, Mark from Devil's Hands Workshop, uh, made for me. His link is down below, by the way. He's a luthier, makes guitars and sells guitars bits. Thank you very much, Mark. First up, we'll test the nitrite. Now, the nitrite is just five simple drops, and the nitrate is a two-part test. So you have an A solution and a B solution. Now, with the B solution, you're supposed to give it a shake for 30 seconds beforehand, and that just gets all the um, particles suspended into the solution, just so you get a more accurate test. That's well and truly mixed. So we'll pop in part A first, 
and it's 10 drops of this and then give this just another quick little shake and now we'll pop in 10 drops of part B and then we cap the two test tubes and give them a bit of a shake now the nitrite uh, just needs a quick shake just like that just to get it all mixed and we're all good to go for this nitrate um, you're supposed to shake for up to a minute so we'll give it a good shake I never shake it for the full minute but just give it a good mix around there we go that should be more than enough now we just sit and wait for five minutes so it's been about five minutes and to begin with you can see the nitrite is pretty much all zero parts per million so that's good and what we want to see now the nitrate is very red and I would say is um, around about the 80 parts per million looking at that now I obviously have a load of nitrates in the system and need more plants to use them up which is something I'm um, hoping to remedy over the next couple of weeks even contemplating adding another bed uh, one thing that I have heard though it is a good idea not to get above um, 100 parts per million uh, someone else said 80 and I've also read 120 uh, the reason being is most fish can take it but it can create nutrient lockout um, it's something I haven't read a reliable source on yet but it's something I am investigating at the moment now I definitely do think that everyone who runs an aquaponics system should have a kit like this um, not only for when you cycle the system but also for um, weekly testings I do think is a good idea or at least monthly testing just to make sure that everything is running smoothly um, if for nothing else just so you know if you need to add more plants into the system or maybe you know there's too much nitrates going in there and you've got the ability to add on another grow bed which means even more veggies for your family so Another thing I would recommend is also uh, washing these vials out as soon as you do the test because um, some of them can stain the glasswork there. So I'll go do that and then we'll start um, getting ready to clean out this filter. So when it comes to cleaning the filter, um, there's really not a lot involved. But what I'm going to do is post the actual step-by-step um, -step process I use in a separate clip. It'll come up in around about oh, six or so hours after this one's posted. But just to give you a, a basic rough idea, uh, the first thing I need to do is um, turn the pump off so no water continues to flow into the fish tank and then I shut off the valve that flows into the radial flow settler itself and then I can bleed out some of the water through a little nifty little side fitting that just reduces the total volume of the radial flow settler itself and then it's just a matter of opening it up and then the pump that removes all the wastewater and deposits it under the lime tree down the back is connected to the little valve fitting down the bottom there. Turn the valve on, turn the pump on at the power point, and then I can just blast all the solids that are trapped in the base of the filter and on the pipe work out. And yeah, it's pretty much all as easy as that. Then it's just a matter of reversing the process, turning the pump off at the power switch, closing the valve, removing the pump, making sure the little valve bleed off line into the sump tank is shut and then open the valve from the fish tank back into the settler turn on the water pump again and then we're pretty much all right to go uh, the next thing i do as well is also top up the water in the sump tank uh, with some water that i have set aside in a dechlorination barrel uh, but i'll go through those steps as well in the separate clip so you can check click on that little link up there if you want an early look uh, but it'll just be made public later on in probably about six hours here on YouTube if you want to wait till then. Now one of the big complaints a lot of people say is when they hear how long it takes to clean out this system is that is a lot of effort to go to just to grow some leafy greens and the odd tomato or whatever you want to pop in your system. Now these folks forget that the main reason most people have an aquaponic system is for these fellas down in here. If I wasn't growing fish for my family to eat, um, nice healthy clean backyard fish that is, you know, as fresh as you can get, come out here, harvest a fish, pop it on the table half an hour later. You know, that's what it's all about. If I wanted just to grow um, nice, healthy, leafy greens, I could look at bioponics or organic um, hydroponics, as most people know it. Um, and then I could turn out really fast growing greens all the time. But, you know, it's, it's all about the fish for me and most people I know who are into aquaponics. So, you know, um, wasting, as some people say, uh, 20 minutes a week, half an hour a week, just to do this sort of maintenance is well worth it when you get to have these juicy little fellas on the table. Almost forgot feeding the fish, so I'll give you a bit of a look at that process as well, folks. Again, this is something I do daily. I'll zero off the scales, then give them generally around about um, 30 grams at a time. And then because I work from home, 
I come back through the day and uh, top that up to the 50 grams. So there we go, 30 grams ish roughly. Now that just goes straight into the tank and I dare say they're going to come up and hit it straight away. So yeah, it won't take long for them to polish that off because they weren't fed earlier today. It was a little bit too cool. And I'll come back a little bit later, uh, toss some in, see if they're still hungry. And yeah, it does pay for you to monitor. Um, if there is any feed left over after about five minutes and they've stopped hitting it, do get your little net and uh, scoop it all out because the last thing you want is some of this feed going manky and um, yeah, potentially causing issues in the system. There's some over the back having a good shot as well. So as you can see, there really isn't a lot to maintaining a small little aquaponics system like this one in your own backyard, especially considering at the end of it, you get to harvest the tasty jades, like the ones we got growing in our system here. Uh, for you folks who want to catch that um, treating pests in aquaponics video, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button down there and pound on the bell icon. And yeah, fingers crossed YouTube will send you a notification once I've filmed it, edited it and uploaded it. And I really would like to thank you all for coming along and thumbing up the clips and sharing them around with your family and friends if you think it's going to help them out some. Before I go, as always, I really need to thank those awesome folks supporting us through the YouTube membership program and also the Farm Your Own Yard members page that we created a little while back. Thank you very much, folks. Really do appreciate it. And if you could check out the super supporters, links to their websites and Facebook pages are down in the description below. I really would appreciate it. I really should cut it off there because I still have to uh, clean out that sponge filter. I do hope you've all enjoyed the clip and your own gardens and aquaponics are booming. And I'll catch you later. Cheers, folks. Have a tough one.